Welcome to Northwest Fencing Center's Fencing Series on YouTube. This is Coach Michael McTeague here with a new Armory video. We are going to be talking today about maintaining your foil. What I like to call care and feeding. In order to keep our baby happy, we need to take care of it. In order to keep our baby healthy, we need to take care of it. And so we're going to take an approach of maintaining rather than repairing. You will often people hear people say, I maintain my foil. Um, as soon as it has a problem, I fix it. That's not maintenance. That's fixing stuff that's broken. And that's going to happen to anybody. But we can make it happen far less by maintaining our weapon. Maintenance is something that looks forward. We take care of something so that it doesn't break or it doesn't break as often as it would if we just ignored it until it did break. Usually this winds up taking you a little bit of time for maintenance and staving off those times where you have to take a great deal of time for repair. Now we're going to take it with a schedule what we do on a regular basis and on what schedule so that we can keep track of the fact that we're maintaining things and we can keep our weapons working properly. On a daily basis, what do I want to do with my foil? I'm getting ready to fence. I'm going to be I'm warming up. Everybody's getting suited up. I'm getting suited up. What am I going to do? I'm going to take a very brief period of time maybe 60 seconds at the most. Let's time it right now. I'm going to pick my foil up and I'm going to examine the condition of the tip tape. Is it okay? Is it not falling apart? Is it starting to shred at all? If it is, it's time to retape. Second thing, I'm going to look at the tip and I'm going to look at the blade, give it a wiggle. I'm going to look here and make sure that these lugs are nice and tight. They're not loose. I'm going to grab the weapon, the bell guard. I'm going to try and twist that grip. It shouldn't twist. If it twists, then it's, I have to tighten it up. I'm going to give it a wiggle, maybe a wrap on my foot. And, find, and if I feel any rattling, funny rattling or something like that, and then I know that I'm going to have to track that down. But I just do those quick things and I'm ready to go. And what did that take? 30 seconds, 40 seconds at the most? That's really all we have to do on a, on a weekly basis, a daily basis. A visual inspection. Does everything look okay? No popping wires, no falling off tip tape, no big dented bell guards. Things are tight, things are clean, and we're ready to fence. That's all we need to do on a daily basis. Just those few little things. That'll keep us from winding up with a foil on strip. It looks like this one where the tip tape's all ratty and falling off. We're going to come back to that one in a few minutes. So on a weekly basis, or daily basis, that's what I do with my foils. When I'm going to, when I'm going to work out, that's what I do. I take a look at those things. Um, I can also take a look at those things at the end of my workout. Um, and if I've noticed that I've started shredding my tip tape or I've got something that's starting to come loose during the workout, I can set aside the time to fix that before I'm actually fencing again. So a daily check just before and maybe just again after my workout. Weekly we're going to get a little bit more involved. We're going to look at all the things we looked at before. We're going to take a look at everything to make sure that it's clean, tight, tip tapes in good shape. That's all we're going to do. Next, on the weekly tag out, we're going to give it an electrical test. We're going to check through and make sure that this one is really working. So we have our test box. We're going to first check, make sure we're using a good body cord. We're going to use that little trick that we did in the earlier video where we stick that on, we slide it up, and you can see that our light stays on. This particular type of tester, both lights go on, and then one light goes out and the other stays steady. Most testers will just have one light and with a foil you clip it on and the light goes on and it stays on. Okay, So 
and I give it a wiggle and I can see that the light stays on so I know I've got a good body cord and I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in once my body cord is plugged in I'm going to come back up to the tip and I'm going to spin I'm gonna push the tip down hold it and you can see that the light goes out so okay I let go of it the light comes back on I push it down the light goes out pretty simple you'll recall from our troubleshooting on the strip the circuit is completed we push the button the circuit is broken the light goes out excellent so I've established that that's working properly next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tip and I'm going to rotate it I'm going to rotate the tip inside the barrel just spin it around a little bit again what I'm looking for is nothing essentially I don't want to see this light flicker at all I'm not pushing on the tip at all I'm leaving it in its unpushed condition there I'm just rotating it around once I've done that and if I do that and it's and it's flickering I know I have a problem inside the tip it's either the spring is is cockeyed maybe the tip itself which is made up of several little pieces uh, the, the point that's inside there maybe that's got a problem um, it may also be indicating that where the wire attaches to the mushroom on the inside of the tip that that's come apart and I have a, a rewire that I need to do um, but it's indicating that there's a problem sometime somewhere in here and I have to dig in further to take a look at that or if that's not my thing I know that I need to put this in the armory for my club armorer to work on. Um, and that means that that'll be worked on and ready for me instead of failing on a strip. <clears throat> so once I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blade and I'm going to bend it like I made a good solid hit. I'm not pushing on the tip, I'm just bending it. And again, I'm looking for the same thing. If I'm getting a flickering light here, or it goes out when I bend it, and it comes back on when it's straight, or it flickers at all when I do this, I probably have a broken wire somewhere. And I'm going to need to have the weapon rewired, or rewire it myself, if that's my thing. Last, I'm going to come back here, or not last, but I'm going to come back here and give all of this a wiggle, give it a wrap on my shoe, make sure that this is not flickering again if it is flickering I've got a loose connection somewhere if I know this is tight probably in the barrel last I'm gonna take my weight I'm gonna place it on I'm gonna push it down make sure the lights out I'm gonna let go make sure the light comes back on obviously a referee just comes along and lightly puts this on and the light stays on every or in the case of uh, on strip there's no light at all everything's fine um, but I like to push it down and let go and make sure the spring really is pushing it back up that tiny extra couple of grams of force is not going to make a difference between not getting a touch and getting a touch but it is going to make a difference between getting a yellow card and not getting a yellow card I want to make sure it really passes so this foil passes with flying colors. I've looked it all over. I've checked the tip. Worked properly. There's no random lights going uh, off when I'm testing. Everything seems to be in ship shape. It's all nice and tight. It's ready to go. I can put this one in my bag, back in my locker, wherever I happen to be storing it, and everything's fine. I'm all set. So, This is the daily, right? Visual inspection, is it clean, is it tight, the tip tape in good shape, just a quick check, I go ahead and fence. Weekly, I add to that, checking the weights and, and plugging it in and making sure that I have an electrical test, test it through electrically to make sure there's no random lights going on, um, or off in this case, and <clears throat> that everything is working electrically the way that it should and that my tip tape is in good condition. This is also the time that I'll take to retape stuff if I need to and we're going to cover that in a second. This translates to competition. 
competition maintenance, having your stuff ready to go. Pre-comp, I'm going to do a weekly maintenance check. Exactly the same things. I'm going to go look over the weapon from one end to the other. If there's so much as a scratch in the tip tape, I'm going to replace it. I don't want to mess with tip tape during a competition if I can help it. I don't want to have little threads hanging out when I'm fencing and distracting me. Um, I want to have everything ship shape and not have to worry about it. So I'm going to put through the entire weekly three check as a pre-competition check. I'm going to do that exact same check between pools and DEs. I'm going to check it with check all my weapons with weights. I'm going to check for tip tape. I'm going to check for any random stuff that needs to be worked on so that I know everything is ready to roll for my first DE. And I'm going to do it again in between each of my DEs. I'm going to check the weapons that I'm using each time. Now, if I only used one weapon, everything else was ch everything was checked before my first DE. I only used one weapon in that DE. I'm going to check just that weapon. I don't have to check the others because nothing happened to them. But I'm going to do that in between each DE all the way up to the final. Now, after each bout, you essentially do a daily inspection. All right. If I'm in pools after the bout or I'm working out after the bout, I salute, I shake hands, I unhook. I check to make sure everything's still tight. I probably know because I've been fencing. I'm going to double check the tip tape and that it's got a little bend in it and everything's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and put that down and I'm ready to go next time. So what we do daily is also what we're going to do in between bouts during pools. What we do weekly, we are also going to do pre-competition in between pools and DEs and in turn in between each of the other DEs as well. In this way, we can make sure that we're not winding up on the strip with problems. Or at least, not the ones we could avoid. Things do break. Things beyond our control will we'll have problems. We'll have somebody flush at us when we're doing a lunge, and we'll bend the blade so, ha so hard we pop a wire out or we break it. That's outside of our control. But this stuff is inside our control, and we can make ourselves as trouble-free as possible by maintaining the weapon rather than waiting for a problem and fixing it. In that last scenario, we wait for a problem, then we fix, we are in a reactive mode. And even when we're fencing on the strip, we don't want to be in a reactive mode, and we don't want to be in a reactive mode off the strip. We want to be, oh, help me for saying this, we're going to say proactive. We want to be ahead of the problems that may come down the pike. So that leaves us with the last little thing, like when I'm, like, when I'm going to tip tape. And when I am doing tip tape on a weekly basis, I don't wait until the tip tape is just totally trashed. This is uh, one that I found here in the club, and you can see that the tip tape on this is just a mess. I mean, it's coming off everywhere. It's ripping and shredding, it's nearly falling off on the tip. This is a weapon that somebody's going to come to me and they're going to say, I, I hit them and it didn't go off. Something's wrong with the tip. Yeah, there is, because when you hit them, the barrel and the tip hit the lame, no, nothing registered. Um, you need to keep this in good shape. So, we're going to tip tape and we're going to check a few things on this when we tip tape because when we have the tape off, there's another little piece of maintenance that we can do. So, when I'm doing my weekly check or my daily check and I notice that the tip tape is starting to get a little ratty, I'm starting to see a little bit of the blade showing through here and there, um, I'm going to replace it then because when the tip, is, tip tape's in pretty good shape, it's easy to get it off and get the blade clean and to tape it up. When it's really ratty like this, obviously this first piece comes off really easily. Yuck, we get that one done. But as I work through here, if I'm going to try and 
peel this tape off with my fingers, I get it started and oh, it comes off just one half an inch and boom, it's off. I try and peel again, oh, oh now yeah, another inch and it's off. I come over to this side and I've got to take it off an eighth of an inch at a time because it keeps breaking. So that makes it more difficult. When I've got it in pretty good shape, I can usually tear off maybe half to all of it. Just burp, peel it off on each side. It's in pretty good shape on one side, oddly, on this one. So for instance, I can kind of peel that off in one piece, and that's a little bit easier. But on this other side where it's all ratty, I still got little pieces all along here. So here's a trick that you can use. Take a craft knife, blade up. You want to work away from you. Don't be trying to peel tip tape back towards you because you'll cut your finger. You can just scrape along the blade and peel that loose stuff up. Make sure that it's all clean. And you can do the same on the barrel. Now this tip tape on the barrel is falling off, but there's a lot of leftover adhesive on here. And I'm going to just scrape that leftover adhesive off. If I have um, a rag and a little bit of um, alcohol, I can also maybe wipe that down and get it clean. But we're doing pretty well right there. All right, so what other maintenance things do I want to do now that I can actually see the tip and barrel of my weapon? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the tip screws and see how they look. And in this case, the tip screws are in pretty good shape. But tip screws take a real beating in the foils. They stick out just a little bit as you're beating and parrying and hitting bell, bell guards and stuff. They get beat up a lot about in the little slot that we want to put our tip screwdriver into gets beat up to the point where sometimes you can't get the tip screwdriver in it anymore. And you have to get some pro help to get that screw out of there. So how can I avoid that? Or at least try to avoid it? Well, I can take a look and I can see that as I'm getting ready to tape that maybe one of the screws is a little bit beat up, but I can actually get my screwdriver still in it. So, the way most people will try and do this is they will hold their foil like this and they'll put the screwdriver here and they'll push into the slot to try and unscrew the weapon, the, the screw in the tip. And they'll slip off and they'll stab their finger with the screwdriver. It's not going to kill you, but it's going to hurt. And it's completely avoidable. If you're at home, you can use a roll of tape, a little masking tape or something, and you can put this in that. And now I can rotate this so that my screw is facing up. Move this out of the way. I can hold it. I can use my screwdriver. I can stick it down in there, and I can unscrew the screw on my tip, get a new one, and put it in. If I have to replace both, replace them one at a time. Take one out, put a new screw in, rotate it over to the other side. Now, if you're at a competition, don't happen to have one of these with you, you have a sneaker with you, stick it in your sneaker. Just stick that in right in the sneaker. Okay. If you're working in a in bleachers in a stand somewhere, um, not only can you put a sneaker on that end, you could put a sneaker over this end while you're working, so that if you drop a tip screw, it doesn't go rolling off underneath the chairs. It's right in the shoe, and you you still have it. So you can use what you've got to make that stuff easier. This is also the point at which you know if you needed to, you would take one screw out. Turn it over on the other side. Take the other screw out. And when you're taking the second screw out, you want to make sure that you have a finger out here 
on the end so that when I get the last screw out, the tip doesn't go across the room. I can take that out, and that's when I can put a new spring in. If I have been failing my weights, that's when I can do that, put that in at that point. So I want to make sure that my tip screws are in good shape. I'm going to loosen them a little, like a quarter turn, and tighten them back up. They should be tightened reasonably firmly, but they're tiny little screws. If you go really hard on it, you will strip that head out, and then you're going to need help getting it out. And I'm going to flip to the other side. The screw is in good shape on this side, but I'm going to check it, tighten it back up, make sure it's in good shape. So, now I know everything's ready to roll, and I can put tape on it. Now tape comes Tip tape comes in all kinds of colors, and it comes in two different widths. You'll find a narrower width. There you go, you can see that. I have a narrower width and a thicker width. Um, people have their preferences for which, um, but the idea is the same in both cases. We're going to tip, tape the uh, along here first, and then we're going to tape around the barrel last. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the thick tape going down the side. Tip tape is pretty easy to tear. You can just tear it with your fingers. If you prefer you can use a pair of scissors. But you're going to want a length of tape that's about the length of a dollar bill. It can be a little bit shorter, it can be a little bit longer, but you're looking for something at about that length. You get it at about that length, you're just going to tear it off and you have a piece of tip tape. We're going to take our tip and I'm going to get up close here for you so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be putting this tip tape right to where the barrel starts to make a tip in. You can see the barrel is not straight all the way down. It comes down and then it angles in towards the blade just a little bit. So I'm going to put the top edge of my tape there. And I'm going to put the rest of it right down so that you can see that it's... Whew, I'm wearing black and the tape is black. You can see that it's going right along there. I'm going to bring this back a little bit closer to me because it's a little easier to work on. And I'm going to rub that down, just on that side. And as I rub it down, I'll begin to see a crease where the corner of the foil is. And I'm going to push it down there. And I'm going to rub that side down until I start to see the crease forming on the next corner. And you see I'm rotating the foil. Nine, uh, 90 degrees each time. I'm not just trying to wrap the whole thing at once. I'm rubbing the length of that side and I see the crease start and I simply push the rest of the way. Now at some point I've gone all the way around and you can see with the thicker tape I've got all four sides, and I've actually done the first side that I did twice. So I started on this side, went all the way around, I'm still on this side. And I'm going to make that same rub, but I've got extra stuff. Now I can go ahead and, and not, I can do one of two things. I can keep going and tape this all the way down so that it wraps around a whole bunch. So it winds up running, wrapping around almost one and three quarters times, or I can go around one and a quarter. So I've got a double layer on the place where I started, but everything is a single layer. And at that point, I can take this and I can just peel this extra part off. You don't have to do that, but I like to do it because it keeps it a little bit lighter. And I'm going to be uh, replacing my tape often, so I'm not worried about it being double layered all the way around. So, you can see 
that is taped all the way around and there's some room at the top. I'm going to grab my other piece of tape here and put this one down for a second. I'm just going to use a contrasting color here because it's kind of fun. People have a lot of fun with their tip tape colors. Um, you know, if your uh, club colors are red and black, <clears throat> some people like to do black with a red tip or red with a black tip, or if your club colors are blue and yellow, you can you can do that. But I'm going to actually let me take that off. I'm going to pull out a piece of tip tape and. I want it to be about one and a half times as long as the barrel. And I'm going to tear it off, but you could just as easily go ahead and cut that if that's something that is easier for you. Now I have the what we call the machined edge, the edge that comes from this part of the roll long ways. And that edge wants to be up at the top of my tip. I want to get it as close to that edge as I can without getting it in the edge or above it. And I'm going to use the machined edge so you can see I've got it going long ways like a little flag. And I'm going to slowly wrap this around I'm pushing it down a little with my thumb as I go, but I am concentrating mostly on keeping this even all the way around the top, close to the edge. Until all the tape is there. And I only want to be going around one and a half, two times at the most. And I press that all down. I don't want this really thick and heavy because if it's thick and heavy when I go to test weights on the strip the weight from the referee is going to be dragging on this and now the spring not only has to lift the weight of this but it has to overcome the friction of this sticking to the tape so I don't want it to be too fat All right, so that that'll go on and off and now I have the tip retaped you can see if I hold this up close and steady. That that is very close to the edge all the way around. One complete piece and it's about the length of a dollar bill from the tip to the end. It's maybe a little shorter in this one, but that's fine. I'm well within regulations and it's in good shape. The tip tape not only insulates the barrel and the tip of the weapon from hitting the lame, which will mess up our scoring. We won't get that touch. But it also helps protect those tip screws a little bit from getting too beat up. It's one of the reasons we want to replace it more often, too. I don't want to wait until it's the shredded mess that we took off of here before, <clears throat> because that's much more likely to leave me with tip screws that are so beat up that I can't get them out. If I can't get them out, and my club armorer can't get them out, then the only thing I can do at that point is unscrew the barrel, rewire the weapon, and put a new tip on. So I'm going to avoid that expense and that pain by redoing my tip tape more often. So that's pretty much it. We're going to maintain our weapons daily with a quick check, weekly with a more thorough check and a retaping if they need it. We're going to repeat those things pre-competition, between pools and DEs, and between DEs. And after every bout, during practice or at a competition, we give it a quick look over to see that everything's tight and in good shape and that nothing has happened to it during that, con that particular bout to cause a problem later on. That way we maintain, we take responsibility and look forward to do things properly rather than having things break and being in a reactive frame of mind and having to react to those breakages. And that's pretty much it.
keeps going back to what I keep saying on Armory. Control what you can control, and you'll have fewer worries. And that's it for today. Have fun taking care of your foil. This is a great time now to practice doing some of this stuff. Order up some tip tape online. Practice taping your blade. Um, it gets to be a lot of fun. Play around with colors. Enjoy yourself. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one when we're going to talk about the care and feeding of your epee. Bye-bye.